it's funny how it all uh, started. I went through a liver transplant and uh, really am not supposed to be here. Of all the people that uh, um, went that were going when when we were going we my wife because i really didn't know a whole lot about what was going on uh but uh people were just passing away left and right you know uh the day we did it i think there were 15 of us that had the surgery that day uh, i'm one of three wow. that that survived and you get that deal you know like where you see the plane go down or the military guy that comes back and everybody got killed except you and you're wondering why me and uh so, so that's that's where i was 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 why me once i got out of there and uh, uh I'm, I'm sitting here wondering you know what good am, am i you know at that particular point where you're in the bed for that length of time and all and 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 you just you're unable to do anything for yourself and and getting up you know uh, my wife had to be the one to help help me get up, you know, out of the bed or get up out of a chair, or what all, whatever. And it, it's just a rough, rough experience for a person that goes through that. That helped give me a lot of compassion for a lot of people, you know. And two, I understand how it feels, and I can think through things on a flight uh, when when people are trying to get on and they can't hardly move. I think of things the way I had to think of it, uh, being sick like that. And so that that's one thing that kind of comes into play and helps. And then uh, I've sitting there one morning and. Uh, praying about five o'clock in the morning because when you do that and after after two months you know and there's nothing to do but watch television you have seen promise you every episode <laughs> of everything from every season that there is on tv it doesn't take long and i was sitting there and just asking god you know i said lord what now you know what good am i what now and in that not an audible voice, but in that spiritual voice that, that we, when we listen to see what God is trying to tell us, you know, I felt, tell everybody. So, okay, tell everybody. Here I am sitting here in the house. I'm not even cleared from my immune system to go to Walmart, you know. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I'm, I'm sitting there, can't leave, nothing's happening. Well, the telephone rings, telemarketer. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, Mr. Sales. How are you today? Oh, just fine. How are you? Oh, very nice. Thank you for asking. You know how they do. And uh, so I began to tell them what Jesus had done and how I was still alive. And I began to, to, to share with them uh, all the different things, the miracles that we saw happen at uh, UAB while we were up there, the ones that my wife shared with me that uh, told me that, that happened. And uh, uh, we'd keep, I'd keep them on the telephone for maybe 30 minutes. The thing about a telemarketer is uh, it's not that I'm that interesting. A telemarketer can't hang up the phone with you, you know, because their <laughs> boss, their supervisor standing there. Don't you let them off the phone, you know, till we get a commitment out of them. So I, I didn't either. I let, kept them on the phone till I got a commitment out of them, you know. And they didn't know you were a salesman as well. Yeah, right? exactly. exactly. So, you know, we would share, I shared with them uh, about what, what Jesus had done and all. And so, Time moved on another month or two of that, and I was having a good time and uh, just enjoying the telephone ring. Had the, had a lady call. She'd been in an accident, and she was calling her uh, um, the place where she worked to let them know she, she her son had been in an accident, and he she wasn't going to be able to be at work that day. Car had hit him just behind the uh, uh, the driver's side, just behind him, and just tore that car up. And so I said, well. Praise God, he's still alive at all. And she said, he got out without a scratch on him. So we talked about it. This we, is a wrong number, too. Yeah, we pray, and it was a wrong number. It was she a wrong got number me. he's talking to. She wasn't calling me. Thank you. And uh, I get off track, you know. I have uh, I have uh, uh, brain atrophy, you know, I'm told. And uh, Roz has the scans to prove it. To prove it, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I kept her on the telephone. We just began to share and talk and uh it, it just turned into a, a, a real good time. Well, uh, you know, with the Lord and everything. So then we move on a little bit later, and I'm still, I finally graduate to where I can walk with a cane. And you understand, before then, when, when you have a, a liver transplant, you, you have to take this, uh, uh, the medicine, anti-rejection medicine. It's very expensive medicine. And uh, one of the things you get is rheumatoid arthritis. And 
if you've never had it, if you've never seen anybody with it, I mean, it hurts to touch, it hurts to move. And uh, my son uh, was only maybe 15 years old at the time, and he would go and get his arms underneath me and move me from one chair to the chair right next to it, and I cried like a baby because it hurt so bad. And uh, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. But it got better, got where I could get up on the walker and stuff and move around the house. Uh, I played that for all it was worth. You know, I, I sure would like a glass of ice water, you know. Or uh, if you take a look at me, obviously, or, or, or a bowl of ice cream, you know, would be good. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, got where I could move around. So we go to go to church. We go to Wednesday night supper. And we're at Wednesday night supper, and it's just an unusual thing. All the seats at Wednesday night supper are full, except for two seats. And the two seats that are uh, open uh, belong to Tommy Lee and Lindy Lee. Your well, competition. My competition. Right. Right. And Tommy's our pilot and president That's of right. Pilots for Christ. Well, Tommy's not there yet because he's on a flight. But Lindy's there, and she's very nice. And I knew she was nice. I knew Tommy was nice, too. Yeah. But she's very nice. And so we sat down, you know, which we never do. You know, we just don't do that. And Tommy, tell you, we don't do that. And uh, uh, But we did and got to visit, and she began to tell us some different things that was going on. And Tommy's not here right now. He had to fly here, and he'll be here in just a little bit. And uh, then finally he made it, and we sat there and talked for a little bit, and he was talking about just all these terrible things, how expensive everything was, and just don't know where the money's going to come from and all of that. And uh, when we got up uh, to leave, that voice, that spiritual voice in the back of my head again started, and it said, I want you to help him want you to help them. Well, my wife had just got through helping the uh, school where my son goes to school. She raised uh, uh, right at $15,000 for them, 50 cents at a time, <laughs> you know, 50 cent tickets to, to do their little fair and stuff that they had done. And that was in the fall. And uh, so uh, she decided that, uh, I told him, I said, you've got a fundraiser right here. She knows how to do this. She'd worked in economic development. She had been trained by the state of Alabama. She knew how to go out there. And uh, uh, when she was trained, that was 21 years ago, 22 years ago, it was just as we were starting to get Mercedes and Toyota and Honda into the state of Alabama. So she was right there on the cutting edge with all those people. And uh, uh, Trust Joyce MacMillan was one of the companies that she was able to bring in to Conecuh County. Wow. And uh, so she knows what she's doing. And uh, we uh, um, just began, felt like we should help them. So she goes on her first flight with Pilots for Christ, and she's realizing this is exactly what we're supposed to be doing. This is where we're supposed to help. And then uh, they had asked me to come on and share uh, on their little radio program that they had over there, and they had it at Lee Motor Company, which I'd only <laughs> been in there about three times in my life, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, But uh, I was in there talking with them. And they had a big announcement. And John Sessions, uh, that owns Conecuh Sausage, right. John bought out Lee Motor Company. Well, I'd just been talking to Tommy. It was the best kept secret in Monroe County. And uh, uh, they had bought it. And so I knew how Tommy felt because I had been out of the automobile business now for over two years. And uh, was, you know, it, it hurts when you're. You know, you still feel like you're young. I'm not young, but, you know, not that old. And you spent your life doing it. And you spent your life doing it. So I knew how he felt, you know. And uh, so I went to the hangar and just talked with him. And we just sat around and talked for a little while. But I uh, uh, started showing up in January, just just coming around and helping him. Well, the first thing they had in there, he said, uh, he said, well, I don't know what all you can really do. Uh, he said, uh, we're trying to get this mail out out. We've been working on it for two weeks. Uh, Lindy and I came down the, the other night. We worked till almost midnight, you know, and I got to look at that mail out. Well, since I was about eight years old, my dad did mail outs with the, uh, for the automobiles all the time. I said, I know how to do this. And Roz and I knocked that thing out in about two and a half hours. And uh, uh, I got to laugh. And I said, "This we've been training for this all our life. <laughs> and uh, uh, next thing we know, I finally get on a flight with him in February. 
I think it was, it was March, got on a flight with him to uh, Temple, Texas. And uh, so when I got up there, I, uh, I turned around, and the guy was on the stretcher back there. And I said, this is just real interesting. And they, they had one little camera mounted there on the dash. I said, what do y'all do with the camera? He said, well, it, it helps with the identification of the bodies, you know, if we were to crash. <laughs> and uh, But they would shoot video. They would, might shoot a picture of uh, uh, a takeoff. Right. Well, the only video that Pilots for Christ had up was foggy morning takeoff and it was just a picture of the plane leaving in the and it was from the cockpit and it's all you see is the fog and then eventually you'd see the sky and that was it that's the only video they had up I didn't think think anything of it I didn't plan to start shooting videos or anything but on this flight to Temple Texas uh it, all of a sudden, that spiritual voice inside said, man, this would be a great thing for you to be videoing, son. You know, And so I just, what do I video with? I don't want to use that camera, but I tried. They didn't even know if it had sound on it. By the way, it turned out it did have sound on it. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that's another story. But uh, I, I turned around and thought about my phone that I had in my pocket. So I turned around and started videoing. And then about that time, a B-52 flew right in front of us. <laughs> That's a huge yellow school bus in the sky, <laughs> right? if you don't know. And uh, just an awesome sight to see. And got a, got a video of it. And then we did our landing and then the people standing around and unloading the stretcher and stuff. Got home and I just downloaded all the videos. Really wasn't thinking about it, what I was going to do with it or anything. But started messing with it and playing with it. And uh, uh, about 2 o'clock, 2.30, I finished it, and I put it up on the uh, website. And it had a couple of thousand people look at it, you know. And I said, huh, how about that? And uh, uh, I, I remembered, you know, I, I got a chance to... Uh, I was talking with uh, uh, Lynn out front a few minutes ago, and she went to Alabama. And uh, uh, I said, well, I went to Alabama. I played drums at Alabama for a whole year. <laughs> then they told me not to come back, you know, because of my grades. And uh, But I did take a class there called Fundamentals of Telecommunication. And it's television. It's videos. <laughs> and uh, uh, I thought, I said, huh, once again, I said, God's been training me for this all my life. And so we started putting videos together this year, and there's probably about 50 of them up on the website right now that you can see. Uh, everything from uh, little children, two-year-olds that we have flown and stuff, to uh, uh, 88-year-old Mr. Joe Weaver from out of Escambia County, Florida, been in education uh, all of his life and then retired. And, uh, and then Bailey Bird. We met Bailey. And uh, that was just that was just great. And uh, she uh, just really made an impression, she and her mom, her mom being so full of faith and Bailey being so full of faith in what God was able to do. And uh, we started putting those videos up and, and things like that. And it just began to be an expected thing. We'd just shoot a video and I'd have people ask me, say, do y'all do that for all of your patients? And I said, <laughs> Gosh, I hope not. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a long, it's long a work. process. It's a lot, a lot of work. work. You, you do yeah. production. Shooting the video was the easy part. That's oh, yeah. the <laughs> easy part. The editing, right? It's the editing. It's the editing yeah. and getting it. And then you want to find the right song for it, Tom. And uh, uh, so we started putting those, those up and uh, found out some, learned a lot of other things that God, God showed us. And uh, uh, when, uh, you know, at, at each time, that we do something like that, those videos. A lot of people watch them, and uh, we've had people call us from, I had this past week, after Megan's uh, the, the, the situation, we had people as far away as Colorado and Nebraska call me. I'm thinking, how do you see these videos in Colorado and yeah. Nebraska, you know? And uh, we've been to churches in Houston, and uh, uh, I have watched one guy bump another guy said that's the video i was talking about wow. and i'm like how do you see that out here but yeah. facebook uh a lot of people call it waste book but facebook can be a very strong tool and uh, i think ross told me that uh the radio station here your station had something like fifty thousand hits on it we did uh, yeah. just a lot 50, of people thousand hits concerned yeah. with the for That's megan exactly right. and for her family and uh, uh it was just a very uh it, there's no telling how many people that megan kelly touched uh and 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 that god 
was able to use her and continues to, and continues to use her. Uh, it's just am- uh, amazing what has happened.